This is the GV Podcast, a variety review podcast featuring two of the three idiots giving their thoughts on cartoons and anime. This is an opinion-based podcast, and there's no way we're saying our thoughts and opinions are objective. Keep this in mind and enjoy the show. Hello, everybody. My name is Mayhem. I'm Jinsu. I'm Duke. And today we're talking about the other, the rest of Fullmetal Alchemist Brotherhood. Where we, last time we ended on episode 26, 27 in that area. Yeah. And so we went from that far, from 1 to 27. Now we go from 28 to 64. <laughs> Literally known as the rest of the show. <laughs> and I gotta say, this show, how is this not like part of like a big like group understand? Like, I understand the big three and why they're called that and all that kind of stuff. But full metal alchemist very much deserves the number one. It very much deserves like it deserves it. It's <laughs> well, that's what I was getting at. It very much okay. deserves it. <laughs> it deserves it. It deserves the number one. <laughs> I was going to say like, why doesn't full metal alchemist? Yes. Yes, it does. <laughs> but, but, what, but whenever like any like conversation of anime and all that kind of stuff happens, I've literally not heard Full Metal Alchemist like at all. I don't know how. Like, I did a I, lot. <laughs> I think the only like, I think it's because everyone agreed that it was good, so they kind of just like left it. They were like, "All right, well, whatever." <laughs> <laughs> They're like, "All right, d- in done out. This is great. <laughs> all right, moving, moving on." on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's gate kept. <laughs> it is properly gate kept. <laughs> properly gate kept. It is kept safe. No, I was gonna say when it comes to Full Metal Alchemist uh, Brotherhood, honestly, that's an anime that is like the number one of like it's a great one to start with. I will say that it like, is. It's it... a very good one to start with because it doesn't really have any of the weird stuff that anime usually does. I mean, no fan service. Uh, yeah, no fan service. I, I would at say all. it's it, like, like at most you would say lust and like, but that's her char- her literal character. Yeah. yeah, and she's not even like overly. Yeah, about she's it. not sexualized or anything. She just has a slightly revealing dress, and she's yeah, she's that's seductive. It. That's it. And like the only problem I would say with uh, Full Metal Alchemist is a bit of the humor, but that's like the classic like twenty ten humor. Yeah, that, yeah, that, that, making that, fun that's of short times. people. <laughs> he, he, he's short. <laughs> he's I, short. I, I, I will say. <laughs> He's short. <laughs> La- last time I was, it was starting to get annoying to me, and now that I finished it, I'm just like, yeah, yeah, he's short. <laughs> yeah, he sure is. Yeah. <laughs> I will say at the end, it is hilarious that he that he is still shorter than Alphonse. <laughs> well, well, yeah. <laughs> that Alphonse still it just even after getting his body back. Yeah, yeah, he still got taller. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, he drinks his milk. He's a healthy boy. <laughs> yeah, yeah when, when he goes into the place, I'll take a milk, please. <laughs> I always want to one up my brother. <laughs> or make sure I want to push you off here and break your new, newly acquired arm. <laughs> want, want me to push you off the roof and break your new arm? <laughs> <laughs> your army just got that was back? the funny thing too about watching the bloopers is just how much of it was Alphonse <laughs> yeah cause cause he's all nice he's trying to save your fucking life <laughs> yeah 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 <laughs> and then the bloopers is unhinged <laughs> that, that, that when when that part happened it was just like leave me behind no I'm trying to save your fucking life <laughs> <laughs> trying to save your life you idiot it's like it's so in line with Alphonse's like reaction it fits to what's more ha- as him being a 14 year old yeah 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 <laughs> Like that just it kills me. <laughs> it just Dude, it, it is the it is a more accurately portrayed fourteen year old. That's the thing I will say that right now. If if you want some fun after watching this, go watch the bloopers. Holy shit! Oh yeah, just the, watch bloop- the bloopers for anything, bro. It's so funny. Maybe watch not the maybe not the bloopers for Dragon Ball. They say some offensive stuff. But, oh um... yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mayhem, have you heard? I have not. Uh, there is. Uh, it is. What's his name? Sean Schemmel. Uh, saying uh, uh, the F slur. Like the derogatory term for Oh, no. Yeah. oh and he's talking no. about Gohan. He's talking about Saiyan Man, Super Saiyan Man, Gohan. Oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wasn't there one where it was him talking? It was like supposed to be him talking to Frieza, and uh, like uh, he replaces Frieza with that word. Oh, no. Yeah, yeah so based? now, when. <laughs> now, whenever uh, people are watching that scene after having heard that, 
That's all they hear. That's all they hear, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. It's like when people are watching Family Guy and uh, you uh, you get uh, Peter walk through the door. Stupid doctor. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Stupid bitch. <laughs> no, there's a different thing people have heard. <laughs> Switch it with, I guess you could say. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, no. Uh, bloopers for this one are fucking hilarious. Oh, they're so good. Like, uh, still my favorites are uh, Chris Sabat and uh, Hohenheim uh, uh, characters. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Let's look at the door. Oh, yes. End scene. <laughs> 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 or still the best, once again, Hohenheim. Uh, just his uh, moment of just like, like this is the power that you, uh, uh, this is the exact thing you wanted, Greed. And it's like, go get him! You've got this. Fuck him up. <laughs> Do it. Just Hohenheim screaming that. I lose it every time. But okay. So to mention non spoilers of of the rest of Full Metal Alchemist, basically. <laughs> I think we already went off the rail with that one. Yeah, we went off the rail so quick. But holy shit, bloopers are great. The series itself was fantastic. It it deserves much... that like high spot. Like it, it's moved past the point of being number one, but still, it deserves to be high. Yeah, Fullmetal Alchemist is definitely top tier. Yeah, without a doubt, I'd say a top five, uh, like of all time, anime uh, would be fair enough. The only unfortunate thing is fans are never going to let it not be number one. Well, I mean, they're they're fans. That's what they're supposed to do. No, <laughs> but the way they bomb shows. Oh, those people. That, like, that's every, what sucks. There's so many fan bases that do that. So many there's communities that do that. It's like it's that. just the internet, bro. Like, yeah, <laughs> it's unfortunate, but it, I will I will say that and, that, like, and that's the know. thing is that their numbers only go up because it's just people who watch the show get that dedicated to it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that that's something else too is that it's in a very unique situation that's just everybody who watches it turns into someone who really likes it. Yeah. Who really wants it to stay number one? <laughs> yeah, I'm not gonna lie. I fell in love pretty hard with with Full Moon Alchemist. It's just I, it's good. I, it's I will very say well it animated. Does... Like especially for the time of like it, like there was plenty of other good anime that came out at that point uh, that were well animated. This one is continually well animated. Like that's it, a it's... massive compliment I can give it. Of from beginning to end, it is well animated. There's only like a few points early on where I had complaints about animation, and that was literally just me comparing it to 2003. Because, yeah. once again, 2003, that was a beast of itself, yeah. Which, the only scene... There's one scene that I've ever seen from the from the original version, and it's when the mustache... With um, uh, Armstrong and the husband meet, and they flex at each other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I think his name was Connor? Oh, Sig. I for, I for, oh, Sig? Yeah, it's Sig. It's Sig, yeah. Yeah. Sig's dope. S- Sig is an awesome character. Sig is the dad everyone wished they had. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Nine feet tall and jacked. <laughs> yeah. Pure muscle. Pure muscle. <laughs> butcher. <And> butcher. Nice. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Gentle giant. <laughs> but uh, I think I think he also <laughs> wishes he could be the father. For yeah. Oh, that's me. You know who else wants to be a father? You know who else wants to be a father? <laughs> man whose wife can't produce. Oh, Jesus. Man. She's not a mom. <laughs> Jesus, man. <laughs> Miscarriage into heresy into death. Oh. That, that's something I want to touch oh. on real fast is just... The whole alchemy thing is just show like watching this. That was funny. Like that was so fun when it came to watching this show. Your thing about alchemy was hilarious. That basically just watching this and seeing the absolute like deterioration for the value of a human life. But then the characters, but like the main characters being like, "Holy shit, this is terrible!" And the amount and like seeing just how alchemy just is so. Dehumanizing. so dehumanizing and you have value nothing it's like you the only thing you value is your own existence and that's even that like that's not even a hundred percent it's so crazy to me just like you can just go into alchemy and just not care and 
from and like from, murder your daughter and murder your da- turn her into a chimera. Yeah, I was gonna talk about cause that mayhem house. to stop watching for <laughs> two months for for a bit. Yeah, and just how someone just takes their own sanity, almost. sanity, their own human emotions, everything, their their way of thinking and all that kind of stuff. It just throws it all aside because, oh, I just want to get stronger. What does that even mean? Why is that even a, a goal? Why is that your goal? <laughs> to get stronger. And? Yeah. <laughs> At what cost? At what cost? In all fairness, I will say, in all fairness uh, for that uh, idea, that's just an anime idea of, like, to become stronger is just a borderline anime idea. You have to sacrifice something. Yeah, well... You either have to sacrifice something, or you have to ignore, uh, like, basic morals. Basic morals to uh, give an equal amount trade. In it, all it, fairness, the fact like, that it makes you've seen human some stuff souls, with souls Super Dragon Ball. The fact that it makes souls, like alchemy Currency. itself, it makes it makes human souls a number. Yeah, it's currency. It, it just makes it a currency number that can just be nah, throw it aside. And like, I, like I, I'm just glad that. I'm just gonna say this spoiler real fast. That's just I'm just glad that Ed at the end just goes, No, I don't want alchemy anymore. <laughs> yeah. This is awful. <laughs> this is terrible. It's I will say real quick of the reason I find it funny the way that you've mentioned how bad alchemy is, like because I agree. I agree first off. Like it's it's a messed up system. But the thing that makes me laugh about it is the fact that Alchemy is the number one most wanted power system by anime fans. Like the like if, like, like uh, when asked like hey what power system would you want would you say is like the best power system like one that you'd want to do everyone will always say alchemy. Pagans. Pagans. <laughs> <laughs> it, like you know what the power I want? <clears throat> what? Jesus. Jesus. Cuz we always strive to be judged. Like you Jesus. want stand? You want stand power? No, I'll take common. I want um <laughs> whatever the fuck Zenitsu trained in. <laughs> the water breathing. Yeah. No, Zenitsu. Zenitsu. Oh, sorry, sorry. Lightning breathing. Or thunder breathing, right? Yeah. Thunder breathing, yeah. Sorry. He breathes the thunder. He claps. Yeah. <laughs> thunder. Clap your cheeks. <laughs> it, it does the slow mo. <laughs> <laughs> you ever seen that episode One of? Fan, clap. Uh, you ever, I was gonna say, you ever seen that episode of uh, uh, SpongeBob? Crusty uh, 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 Cray Pizza. <laughs> oh, you've never seen Iron <laughs> Buns, okay? <laughs> never seen Iron Buns? Oh yeah, Iron Buns. God damn that that image in my mind. <laughs> you just you just invoked that thing to pop up. Just seeing Patrick's just <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say mayhem. Yeah, that image. Yeah, yeah, that image of the clapping that he does. <laughs> I can do it in my sleep. What you disturbed by the image of Patrick clapping cheeks? <laughs> his own cheeks, <laughs> working his cheeks out with the fucking metal thing <laughs> in his own sleep. Yeah, the iron buns. You know who else has iron buns? And getting p- uh, about to have a pile drive uh, uh, by the uh, two wrestlers. And you just see, and squeeze! <laughs> oh no, iron buns! <laughs> <laughs> Chekhov's iron buns. What a Chekhov's way iron buns. Holy so, God. yeah. Do, the do you think Chekhov has like, gotten enough royalties for the amount of times that he gets referenced? Chekhov's dead. Or is he? Chekhov's death. <laughs> <laughs> Man, if only they predicted that. In the first act, there was a coffin. <laughs> in the first act, there was a coffin. Chekhov was in it. <laughs> and he was also the child. Oh. There's a coffin. <laughs> there's a house. What? No, what was it? What was that meme of like, there's a coffin. It's got it's got a name on it. Whore. And you're going in it. <laughs> 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 oh, that's hilarious. But so Full Metal Alchemist once again, Ready like we play. were saying, it hundred percent deserves that like top high tier. top tier title. It's definitely top tier. Like it, it's the anime that I feel uh, would be best for a person to get into. Yeah, why is this? Why did we wait so long to watch this one? <laughs> uh, because we had to watch JoJo first. Oh God, yeah, that was <laughs> yeah, that was the thing that I had to watch first. In you watched get... all of JoJo and then this. Yeah, then I was able to watch something normal. <laughs> and you know I... the funny thing? You technically watched what 
more dedicated anime fans say is the best anime of all time, which is JoJo. Ugh. Like, that's still hilarious. Hey, you've watched what most people regard as the number one anime, and you've watched what all the most dedicated weebs say is the number one anime. <laughs> is that mean to say? I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> they have one thing in common. Muscular men. Based as fuck. <laughs> mm, gay as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, let's get into the story. <laughs> okay, so story. Shut up! Are we starting from the very beginning? Or? No, not from the very beginning. We're starting from episode... Quick summary of the very beginning of basically a uh, kid's mom died, a uh, kid tried to bring him back, lost arm, leg, brother, brought it back in suit of armor, whole no, thing. No, he lost, he lost his leg and brother, and then he was like, fuck, I need my brother back, take my arm. Take my arm! <laughs> I think if he managed to make a medium between his brother's soul and a piece of armor using his arm at the age of, like, nine. Nine. Right. Yeah. <laughs> well, it was also because, wasn't it uh, because of the fact that he had acquired all the knowledge of alchemy in that moment? Yeah, he did. Yeah, and so that's in how that he was moment. Able... Yeah, in that moment. He, uh, like, in that moment where he'd lost his, ar- his leg, he had acquired all knowledge of alchemy, basically. Because he, he saw the truth. He saw the truth. All right, let's get into and the, the story. the truth is, his mom is still dead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, still and dead. the truth of the matter is, you can't bring... That's my favorite thing, I think, about Full Metal Alchemist, is that when a character is dead, they're dead. They're dead. They're fucking dead. There's no... You don't see them again. You don't... The characters only think about them. There's no flashbacks. There's no, like... Anything, they're gone. And you, the... It's the, set in stone. It's set in stone, and the, the audience has to deal with that, just like the characters do. And it creates a much stronger connection between the audience and the, and the the, the story. And there's also the, the, those... there there is also like the risk of death. That's like if someone dies, they're dead. Yep. Instead of like, oh, they're dead. I'll oh, just bring it back. Yeah, death finally has a weight in a yeah. goddamn story. I, I get so annoyed at Dragon Ball <laughs> because no one fucking dies. Hey, Gohan, you're I gonna feel... get you're gonna get to meet King Kai. <laughs> I was gonna say, I feel honestly, it's like when it comes to anime and death, the way that anime handles death, uh, Full Metal Alchemist, first off, handles death perfectly. Of they're gone, we remember them, but they're not going to come back. Uh, there are plenty of other shows that handle death, uh, either great or eh, kind of yeah. like you know what I mean. Yeah. Of like, like you said, Dragon Ball, worst way to handle it. Death has no meaning. It so. It becomes weird when in every movie, it's like, well, we got to be careful in case this person dies. And no one dies in any movie ever in a franchise yeah, Sora, where Sora death Online. doesn't matter. Sword Art Online, none of the important characters died. I, <laughs> even though the main characters died at the fucking end. I, I get so mad at Sword Art Online for that. Still haven't watched it. The whole, only seen the first episode. Yeah, the whole gimmick of the story is that, oh, she died in the game, you die in real life, oh. and no one dies. No oh. one important dies. No one important dies except for a person that literally just helped to give the main character trauma. That was it. <laughs> I was about to say, man, can't wait, can't wait to get into watching that and then watching someone important and then they die and it's just like, oh, okay, he's now he's completely useless. All right, guys. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, main characters had trauma now. That's it. Done. Hell yeah. Bye. Hell yeah. That 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 instance was good. That was a good like like impact right of the whole like okay death is real death is real but then they <laughs> you've seen, you've seen, then they you've throw seen it out the fucking window I was gonna say you've seen the videos right Just, don't worry it's not your fault your fault your fault your fault your fault <laughs> <laughs> the abridged of Sword Art Online right the abridged that shit was where the so character funny. who dies had laggy internet yeah, yeah. so as they're dying they just go it's not your fault your fault your fault your fault your fault your fault <laughs> That that abridged made made me like Sora Online again. That shit yeah. was fucking hilarious. I've heard that apparently the later seasons get better. Like basically, once you get past the gun season, it starts to get better. Yeah, uh, Alicization, I believe it's called. Is they, the they, that's really they, good. They, they, because they removed the main character. They, the story started being about the other characters instead of instead of the main dipshit. <laughs> so yeah. So it just it, it, it the the story had more stakes. The characters, other characters, could be fleshed out more. It was interesting. Yeah, that's the unfortunate thing. A main character, the reason why he sucks is because he has no personality. He has no personality? He's the MC coon. Like he's, he just, he's just overpowered, like full dive. MC. I all the, cure all the your girls trauma. Fall in love with him. He's full a power, dive. big power fantasy. Like that, except, uh, well, guess what Full Dive's inspired by? 
<laughs> yeah, in all fairness. I started with the worst one. <laughs> with Dude, I read what happens afterwards. Like, the blonde girl that was upset in full dive and wanted to kill the MC. Yeah. Uh, she basically falls for him. Oh. And uh, is <laughs> like, I'll, I'll kill you so that all three of us can be back together. Hey, maybe don't. Maybe I won't. And that's it. <laughs> Man, I'm glad I convinced you. That I you know what, you're right, I won't. <laughs> <laughs> so, Full Metal Alchemist. <laughs> so, going back into Full Metal uh, Alchemist. Yeah, wait, so wait, 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 one last thing, one last thing. I want to talk about Jojo's Bizarre Adventure. Because Jojo, Jojo's Bizarre Adventure is a story where they had really shitty and like annoying deaths. Where it was like, character A holds character B. And they have like dialogue that stretches for like 40 fucking minutes. <laughs> But but they but then it changed to actually having tragic deaths that you're not expecting that yeah. are expectation subversions and cleverly used and a big part of the story as well and, and a definitive you see the ghost they are dead yeah there was only one time I saw where there was no ghost and I was like is is he gonna come back and it was flat out no he's dead no he's gone and it was like one of the ones in part six. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that, like, one of the uh, final, like, uh, major deaths, basically, before everything went to shit. Yeah. But, no, JoJo handles death really well, honestly. Like, especially, like, JoJo is crazy because it is a story where you're watching an author learn with each moment, like, how to yeah, improve the story. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, he, he's In the one that you actually ways. see learn as yeah. he goes. Yeah. And I think that, like, I give him the most credit for that. Because, <laughs> like, other ones, like, they plan it out so well. Like, they plan it out so much that it's, like, oh, th it's just constantly going and constantly getting, like, staying the same. And things are making sense and going together. Or there's ones that completely throw that out the window. In all fairness, when it comes to Araki, he's one of the few creators when it comes to anime where it's, like, you can make jokes all you want. You can never say that he doesn't, like, deserve the accolades that he's earned. He's one of the only manga authors to have his work in the Louvre. Yeah. And to be sponsored by, or to make partnership with, like, a bunch of fashion, uh, yeah. fashion companies. Makes so like, much sense. The fact, that, the fact that the part that's not animated yet, uh, part seven, is titled the magnum opus of his work <laughs> is still insane to me. Can't wait for that to come I out. I can't wait. We're, we're in part nine now. Can you all believe that? We're in part nine. Part I'm reading part nine. Part, part nine. JoJo started in like the 80s. Yeah. Yeah. Pain. Well, it it started in the 80s uh, to the point that uh, it was basically just a knockoff of... Um, Fist of the North Star. Fist of the North Star, yeah. Jeez. And yeah. now it's so Which, much... Which, Fist of the North Star is the like formula for early shonen. For early stuff, yeah. Yeah, early shonen especially like that was the formula of like if you want to have a good shonen you do that. Yeah. And so the fact that basically second generation of that was JoJo and it's still going is insane. But to, well, basically going from that then you get uh, Full Metal Alchemist which is like the epitome of shonen. And, like and, the epitome of a perfect shonen. And it kind of just like is wrapped up in a nice bow at the so, end. So quick summary of basically like I said kids they lost their mom, uh, you don't need tried to, to do a whole human transmutation <laughs> thing, <laughs> lost their body part, uh, lost body parts, and uh, now are working on trying to uh, uh, fix themselves. And that's basically the entire journey. Uh, there have been plenty of deaths along the way that have uh, really hurt them in multiple ways, be it uh, characters like a little girl who they were unable to save, or... Uh, a father-like figure who had passed away in the most tragic way of like uh, looking out for his family, uh, just devastating stuff like that. And currently where we're at, uh, they're starting to learn of a grand conspiracy with uh, the kingdom that they live in, uh, the massive country. And uh, uh, here we are. No. Where basically they have been separated. The brothers have been separated and, Alphonse, the the brother in the suit of armor, he's been he he was talking with Gluttony and one of the uh, sins homunculus, and is basically tricking him, convincing him to take him to do the job uh, to do what Gluttony was supposed to do, which was take Alphonse because he's what's quote unquote a sacrifice, and he takes him to what is known as Father's Lair, 
<laughs> and which is underneath the Capitol. Huh, I wonder why that's like that. That's pretty weird. And at like when they finally get back to the lair and all that kind of stuff, the entire time Ed, Ling, and Envy have all been stuck inside Gluttony's gut. And he, um, wait, am I in the wrong area? That was a 28. I'm in the wrong area. I will say real quick uh, to the people who uh, want to watch this, go watch it. Go watch it. Like, it, if you don't want these massive spoilers if for you the haven't show, already watched a please bigger... go watch it. Yeah, yeah. If you haven't watched, like, a bigger YouTuber or a bigger channel tell you that it's good, uh, go watch it. <laughs> You're watching somebody with 100 subscribers tell you it's good. It's good. <laughs> also, thanks for that, everybody. Thank you. Yeah. Are you sure that it was episode 27? It's tw- it's 28, yeah. Uh, 27 is the clip show episode. 28, we had the whole thing where basically uh, in ah, the previous yes. episodes, yes, okay. uh, Gluttony, uh, a homunculus with uh, a bottomless stomach basically, had con- uh, eaten Edward, uh, the main character obviously, uh, Ling, who is uh, a prince from basically Asia, and Envy, Another one of the uh, homunculus. homunculus. And uh, basically there was a whole thing where Edward figured out how to uh, uh, get them to escape, which uh, they managed to escape, all three of them, entering Father's Lair. And here we are, and at the same time, Scar, the ter- the Ishvalan terrorist, and May, another princess from Asia. From they- Jing. From Jing. Arrive and... They it, like we learned that father basically turned off alchemy, but but Scar and May they have different kinds of alchemy. They have so alka history. Yeah, that can't be turned off uh, in the same way that alchemy can. So they all go after. Why each can you other. still function? Your face is blurred. <laughs> <laughs> and and ba- and like as soon as Ed sees Scar, he just goes, "Hey, Envy's the one that killed the guy that like killed the kid that started the whole civil war." Yeah. Your face is blown! <laughs> I hate you! <laughs> I, I now wish that he did that every time. He was <laughs> he attacked somebody. And they, they go back and forth, but it's What's like, your catchphrase? Your face is blown. And when they find um <laughs> when they find when they come face to face with father, it's literally they call him father, and oh god, he looks like the father of Ed and Al. That's weird! Oh man, is the main villain the dad? Yeah, no, nice that was your thought for a while, but uh I, I like the way they handle this of, like, they could have just made it, like, like, yes, I am on my uh, 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 royal throne, looking down on you people. But the moment that he sees Ed and Alphonse, he just walks down, fascinating! So you're the children of Hohenheim! Fascinating! It just, like, it, it, finding it so cool seeing, like, uh, the children of Hohenheim. Yeah, so it, it puts... it. This is really good for, like, an expectation subversion because when you first meet Hohen... Or when you first meet Father, you're like, oh, what the fuck? Or when you... Uh, who do you see first? Hohenheim or Father? You see Hohenheim first. You see Hohenheim first, yeah. but, it, but then... But then... And then, like, a little bit later, you see Father, and he looks just like Hohenheim. Yeah, yeah, so it's a really good It was a flashback that we saw Hohenheim. Right, right. And like it's it's a really good it's really good to like um how do I say it's it, it's a, it, it's it a good the audience it grabs yeah. the audience like because it makes him go oh what the fuck who's this who's this Wh- who's this character and then he knows Hohenheim he knows Hohenheim and he's like extremely fascinated with Ed and Al so it's like okay what was his relationship with Hohenheim why is he so why, why does he know about them why does he want them for sacrifice. Like what is all what what why is can his he plan? turn off alchemy? Why can he turn off alchemy? What the hell's happening? Yeah, what powers does this guy have? Yeah, and I kind of I kind of want to skip ahead and kind of tell the story, uh, like his is uh, like you want to give a story now? Yeah, go right ahead because he's actually what's uh, he was also a homunculus. He's called the uh, the dwarf in the jar, and this is so far back in time that it's a country that doesn't even exist anymore, and no one even remembers it. And Hohenheim is there as a teenager and he meets and like he's he's a a slave slave. and he's a slave and he is working with this alchemy uh, alchemy guy, alchemist guy and his teacher, his teacher and is like teaching him alchemy and stuff like that and using and he makes friends with the dwarf in the jar and then working together gets Hohenheim more and more 
recognition and status, basically. Like, so yeah. much so that he is able to... Like, work be, with the king. Work with the king and be... Even though he's a slave, he's starting to be treated more as, like, a regular person and all that kind of stuff. This is all taking place as well, thousands of years in the past, yeah, really in the back. ancient kingdom of uh, Xerxes. Yeah, and so... Which currently does not exist, except for ruins. and Like the ancient civilization in Antarctica. Oh. Huh? Yeah. There's pyramids <laughs> in Antarctica. There's pyramids in Antarctica. There's pyramids in Antarctica. Anyway. My least favorite thing to hear is whenever somebody says, why did they build pyramids in this place? Why did they build pyramids in this place? Why did so many civilizations build pyramids? Because it's an easy shape. Because when you stack everything all up together... You're a dumbass. It goes it's an easy shape. <laughs> but maybe it's because the, the world... I hate is... when I hear that. I fucking hate it. <laughs> Just whatever but, people say that. So, so like the the king wanted immortality and all that kind of stuff, as you do. So he's doing like this huge. He wants this huge um ritual to be done. It would and, be immortal. And he uses the dwarf in the jar as like uh, like who has the knowledge in order to do it, to to make the ritual. And turns out that the dwarf of the jar is betraying the king and all the nobles and everything. And because he's kind of made friends with Hohenheim, so they... You are useful. So he rewards him, and they complete the ritual, killing literally everybody in Xerxes, the entire country. Everyone's dead. Completely dead. And now the Dwarf of the Jar looks exactly like Hohenheim, and Hohenheim is now a living Philosopher's Stone. Because that is a thing that happens when you make a Philosopher's Stone, you, kill, you have to kill a lot of people. And put all their souls together into a philosopher's stone. I, I hate the knowledge later on as well that it's like you don't even need a lot of people. It's just you turn uh, you turn souls into essentially like a shield. It's like it's like a dark souls. Yeah. Head. Like when you're killing. <laughs> yeah. When you when, in order to level up your. You got to pop some runes. You got to pop. But to get those runes, you got to kill some people. Like yeah. there's that scene way later on of father uh, like. Uh, getting some more souls for Philosopher's Stone and he just it, it takes the soul from a person and you see a small version of the stone in his hand. Like, we'll get to that scene later, but ugh, hate it. it. It's a lot of that kind of stuff. Yeah. So we also get a flashback to the to the Civil War where the people... The Schwalen Civil War. Where everybody in... Wait, what? It's not Germany. What's the name of the country again? Amestria? Amestria. It's kind of Germany. This is Germany. <laughs> where Pseudo they, Germany. <laughs> where everybody there, uh, where a lot of people that we've seen as, um, especially a Mustang, he was there fighting against the Ishvalan and all that kind of stuff. He killed a lot of Ishvalan and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. It turns out that, that, um, it was all according to the plan of father, essentially. Yeah, yeah that, that. In order to take this area of Ishvalan specifically, rounds out the country into a perfect circle. Yep. And it's revealed that the entire country is a alchemy, like, transmutation circle thing. And it's basically a recreation of what happened to Xerxes with, with um, what Father did to make another country and the amount of people in it take all their souls to make more Philosopher's Stone. Yeah, and it's just like, oh shit! <laughs> when they when everybody learns that, they're just like, shit, we gotta go do all this. Fuck. Yeah. <laughs> so, f flashing back to uh, Al and Ed in front of Father, yeah, they're having some uh, mixed feelings about you know the whole homunculus everything going on. They're starting to fight, and during this whole exchange, uh, Ling is there, and he's just like, oh okay, here's those immortal beings that I. Uh, that I've, I've been, been looking for. Yeah, I've been trying to fi figure out how they got immortality, so... Uh... Hey, bitch! Give me immortality! Hmm, you're bold. Okay. <laughs> Here you go. And uh, put, basically, a homunculus inside of Ling. And, and it was greed. None other than greed. And which, back. holy shit, the entire sequence of, like, showing inside Ling's soul when we see greed... That was so cool. That basically greed as greed, like greed a being, soul looks so damn cool because he's visualized by being like having a face, and then he's surrounded by a bunch of soulless faces and all that kind of stuff to show like that's the philosopher's stone. 
that's in him and all that kind like of stuff. he's yeah. presented as an oni and i fucking love it. It, it it's definitely crazy to see like anytime that they visualify any of the alchemy like mental side of it i very much enjoy like what they did to to make it look to stand out to stand out yeah I, I, it's definitely something that i that i liked but yeah, so now we've basically, for now, lost Ling as he's become a homunculus. And so, it... And he's now Greeling. Yeah. <laughs> Which is the nickname he kind of comes up with for himself. It's... Oh, yeah, I forgot about that name. It's such a bizarre name, I love it. It's so funny, because everyone's like, I'm not calling you that. <laughs> there, we also, um, when going back to the Ishval and Civil War, we meet a new character named Kimbley. And he's an asshole. He also looks a lot like Ling. <laughs> That's nah. a, no, it's just nah. black hair. Yeah, uh, it's the long black hair. It's it, it's, it's like, the black hair and like the very cunning triangular face. Yeah, it was to the well, point. What that felt I, weird was uh, uh, realizing like I had remembered uh, it was a Dragon Ball actor that had played uh, Shigaraki in My Hero, and it turns out it was it was uh, uh, what was it uh, Trunks, because it's so oh, Trunks is yeah. Kingsley, I think yeah yeah. So that's Sa- weird. Sanji is Kimberly, yeah. That that's weird. I I hearing hearing Trunks is Kimberly is super jarring. Yeah, I like his yeah, voice a lot more. And and I so think, honestly, just Trunks Sanji, that voice actor, like he's just jarring in most places where he appears. I think he just does the the Trunks role so well. I don't know. I I think honestly, one of his best roles other than Trunks is Shigaraki in My Hero. Like he, he really gets the he, uh, the have, rasp. I haven't heard it, so I, I wouldn't know, but I... I, I gotta show you that later on. He does right. the rasp really well, and, like, in season five, when he has this massive change to his character, uh-huh. he drops the rasp. Ew. Yeah. He drops the rasp, and it's it becomes real intimidating. Really well done. Yeah. And, uh, but the last thing that, like, we see from the Shvall Civil War is that Mustang, his teacher... Like, he didn't want him to become, like, part of the military estate alchemist and all that kind of stuff with his fire magic, with his fire alchemy. Because it's very strong. Yeah. Like, he, he'd be very useful to fight a lot of unarmed civilians. He'd be a yeah. useful government dog. <laughs> and and basically, Mustang, fi- after he found, after Mustang finding out that that King Bradley is Wrath, a uh, homunculus, he basically starts his own, like, he continues on, like, I'm going to basically become the next Fuhrer because I got to take He'd, over. Oh, I'll say that. In all fairness, he had always wanted to be the next one. He always wanted to basically get rid of Bradley. But now he's got he's got definitely... Extra got, reason. He's got definitely the extra reason. Because he has ambition. And, and a soul. <laughs> and a soul. <laughs> a human fucking heart. <laughs> and Scar rescues the... Uh, the Mer- Marco, Marco. The doctor. Dr. Marco. Dr. Marco. He saves him because he's he's cool. Because Scar Scar is one of my favorite characters. That like I wasn't expecting to like him that much, and Scar just the, over the entire course of the series just got better. Yeah, because you you got a lot of development with him. When it comes to the scene of him meeting Doctor Marco, that was insane. Like once again, he uh, brought Marco along with him, uh, basically to help out with the uh, Scar's future endeavors. But man. That scene is insane, because Marco, the moment he sees Scar, he's just like, Oh, you're that one inch Valen! Oh, thank God! I killed your people! <laughs> he's like, why are you mentioning this? So you can finally kill me! <laughs> Do it! Please! <laughs> I'm a bad person. <laughs> <laughs> Brings him along with him. Uh, goes to, uh, it was, uh, once again, the Jing princess, what was her name? Uh, May. My, uh, May. May? Okay. Yeah, you got May, and of course, the basically Frenchman, I'll say, is the best way to describe him. Yeah. He's a Frenchman. He's a coward. <laughs> but, uh, so... But, uh, go to them, and it's like, okay, well, I need to hide Dr. Marco. Hey, bitch. <laughs> fries his face. In order to hide his identity. Heal his hide. face. Make sure that he doesn't die of those wounds. Yeah. And so we've so, got our party there. So they escape, they get away from father and all that kind of stuff. But obviously Mustang is part of the, uh, the military. So he kind of can't leave that easily. And you know, what does King Bradley do? He sends away literally everybody to different locations and all that kind of stuff to like reassigns them. 
and isolates Mustang completely from everybody else. And it, it, it's a good tactic that basically just take away everybody that was able to do things under the radar. Divide and conquer. Divide yep. and conquer, yeah. And so now it's basically espionage, uh, just trying to figure out how to get everybody back together in a way that allows them to work together. But meanwhile, you get Ed and Al, who their whole story right now is, okay, we need to figure out what the hell is going on with alchemy. So we got to figure some shit out. Let's start heading north to the... What was the reasoning for heading north again? That's what I'm trying to find because it's not really that well explained. They, they need to they need to find um, General Armstrong. They the yeah because she were they also looking for it was they were looking for uh, May because of the fact that she knew Alcastri. She did yes. So she she so May Scar and Marco they fled and heading north. I like that, the different groups that are in the story too. It does it does. D- like get divided up really well yeah and then there, it, there's a part of their group that i i can't wait for us to talk about when it pops up we'll get to that a little later but i can't wait for these characters to pop up they're honestly some of my favorite elements of the group yeah but so, uh yeah heading north uh towards uh the wall uh what was the place called hold on we're not there yet because in the city lanfan She's trying to. Yeah, she's she's trying to find. She's still alive. <laughs> she's still alive. Trying to find Ling. She cut off her arm, in order to deceive King Bradley, and she's basically like, she knows that she's the one that gives Ed and Al the information about May, and Alk history and all that kind of stuff, and so when it's revealed that and when Envy finds out that Marco has been released, Envy's the one to release Kimberly from prison. And basically, he's like, bring back Marco. And Kimberly's just like, all right. <laughs> yeah, it turns out Kimberly, the reason why he's such a horrifying character is because he had a Philosopher's Stone back during the Ishbalan War and Killed a lot used of people. it to kill a lot of people, including Scar's brother. Explosion al- alchemy. Yeah. Which I don't know how that's not just fire alchemy, but whatever. <laughs> it's, it's basically fire alchemy, but more goes everywhere. Right. That's what it is. Uh, fire alchemy is more controlled of, like, you have a certain area where you're basically unleashing a flamethrower compared to, this is a bomb. Yeah. Like, that's the comparison. So, so yeah, so everybody's going up uh, Oh, that's what it is. Scorching and... life versus scor- uh, destroying everything. Ah. Uh. Yeah. And, um, so, so Mustang was able to, like, as a last, like, before King Bradley really was really overseeing everything that he was doing, he was able to reassign Ed and Al and send them up north to Briggs Station, uh, Briggs Fortress, a wall literally just set in the north trying to fend off the Russians. <laughs> <laughs> And so like, I love I love Alex uh, Armstrong, the uh, played by Christopher Zavatch, just, just when you get up there, you'll see my sister. I love my sister. Please be careful. <laughs> Please <laughs> sur- try and survive. Try and survive. I love General Armstrong. She's so badass. She's, oh my god! She's one Do of you my know who voices characters. her in English? Nope. It's uh, Nico Robin. I'll take it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah, so so Scar Marco are heading north. They're being chased by Kimberly. Ed and Al are trying to, like, take the long way to get to Briggs Fortress so, like, they can maybe find May on the way there and all that kind of stuff. And it just kind of doesn't work out. We get a really good fight between Kimberly and Scar on a train. That was re- awesome. We get a really good fight with them on the train. Yeah. And so, yeah, no, the, we've got the chase going on with Kimberly heading towards Scar. We've got Ed and Al heading north. They get intercepted by, uh, what was his, what was his name? Uh, Buccaneer. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, what was his rank again? I'm trying to see if I can find it. Captain. Captain Buccaneer. Captain Buccaneer! I love Captain <laughs> Buccaneer. Uh, uh, Buccaneer is a f- such a fun character, as well as he's got one of the best uh, uh, auto mail uh, attachments. Being this giant... Uh, Claw like, chainsaw. Yeah. It's so cool. And uh, it's it's over the top, but it's like, fuck it. You know what? That's awesome. If you're going to have a, a prosthetic arm, have it be cool. <laughs> and so, like, Buc- so Buccaneer takes Ed and Al and takes, He's takes got them this... to General Armstrong. 
and they are properly just like she deconstructs them and just rips them a new one <laughs> just full no mercy just no mercy just here's what you're trying to do here's why you're gonna fail you're stupid i hate you you're gonna get i'm gonna train you up you l s- plus s- ratio <laughs> 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 so stupid <laughs> so they they and she she's basically just like why are you here what are you trying to do why are you reassigned here what's your purpose here and they're just like uh 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 we don't want to tell you because it's dangerous and she's just like i eat danger for breakfast shut the fuck up tell me <laughs> she means that literally as well yeah <laughs> and so like dangerous one hell of a cereal she's, she's made like do blast. i look like a bitch to you yeah. <laughs> And then the place gets attacked by one of the remaining homunculus that we haven't seen yet of a, of a deadly sin, Sloth. And yeah. holy shit. Sloth looks awesome. And it's like, terrifying. it's basic, but terrifying. A giant gorilla of a man. He's similar, like, bizarre build to, like, gluttony. It, no, I would say... But um, pure muscle. I would say it's, um... If, en- uh, like, if we described Envy properly, it would be, like, if Envy bulked <laughs> yeah that's it's got it's a like. bit of the face though of uh, gluttony like that like uh, the ba- the the blank emotionless stare. personality less uh, uh, or not personality less but like just flat out emotionless yeah look vacant and <laughs> so there's a whole fight in the fortress against sloth and <laughs> there's a scene where she's like in like a tank fighting sloth that's hilarious and i love it yeah <laughs> The scene where she goes up an elevator in a tank and then just pops out and shoots Sloth. Yeah. And just the entire time Sloth just uh what a drag. <laughs> I like I like when one of the one of the bother. higher ups one of the higher ups from Amestria comes and he's like trying to convince General Armstrong to like be immortal and to join them and she's like Sounds like bullshit. And she fucking kills him. Kills him and throws <laughs> and like drowns him in concrete. Yeah. That was great. Just uh, Kimberly shows up and uh, alongside that guy, and is basically uh, he's trying to intimidate Ed and Al. Essentially, is what he's doing. Yeah, and like he's tr- also trying to find Scar at the same time uh, because obviously he's got his mission. And so you get this whole thing of like that higher up thinking like, uh, oh, I can easily persuade her to join my side. Because I... Because who wouldn't want to live forever? <laughs> General, I'm sorry. Shame. You don't care for your country. I'm going to slit your throat now. Whoa, so, concrete be upon you. <laughs> concrete be upon you. <laughs> so we find out why Sloth hasn't been seen before and only showed up now is because Sloth was digging a tunnel. The entire, uh, lining the entire country. Yep. And that kind of takes some time. Especially when your name, is, when you embody Sloth. <laughs> we get a, we get actually, uh, you said that that was the last one. Technically, we get the last one right around yeah, here. So after we get that whole discovery of the underground tunnel. I said what of? Yeah. Not the. Well, we get. Eat it! <laughs> uh, we get the last homunculus being pride and it's like okay well what's a what's pride's deal pride is the oldest motherfucker of... i was gonna do, i was gonna do a whole thing go ahead i was gonna do a whole thing so they then go into the so the tunnel that sloth was going was making to go around the country they send a team down and the team doesn't come back the team is all dead so when except for like two so when they go back in so, like, when another team goes in to try and find them, there's the shadows are moving and all that kind of stuff. And it's revealed that it's Pride, the, the last homunculus. Where basically, we learn later on who it is, is actually what Pride is. And it's kind of terrifying to find out that yes. King Bradley... I love the setup of this. I love the setup of this, of basically uh, Riza Hawkeye going to meet with uh, Bradley's family. And just like, like the entire time she's just like, God, I feel so bad for them. Knowing, like knowing that the husband is a homunculus, knowing that King Bradley is wrath. I can't imagine how they feel. And it's like, oh yeah, no, my son on, uh, uh, who's, uh, related to his father, like uh, oh. his blood related to his father. And she's just, huh? Wait, what? Wait, related to it. Wait, related to homunculus uh. that, that cannot have children. And starts feeling, uh, the somebody fucking, staring. The menace. Yep. 
the, the Jojo menacing. <laughs> walking out the door, uh, getting ready to leave, as the shadows begin to follow her, and it's like, oh, so you finally figured it out, Miss Hawkeye. And it's the kid. That the son of King Bradley, the son of Wrath, is Pride, who is actually the oldest one and the all first that. First homunculus kind of... and the most powerful one. Yeah. Arguably. Because all he needs is a little light, and then he has literally control over all of the shadows. Yeah. Yeah, Salim Bradley. It's it's so dark. Just knowing this poor woman is a basically puppet. <laughs> a puppet <laughs> and for wrath and pride. So there's a whole... For pride and prejudice. <laughs> <Shut up. laughs> so there's a whole thing between the fact that Armstrong, she just murdered a high-ranking officer... And Kimberly's there, and he's just like, well, that was my ticket into getting people to listen to me. Great. And so there's, like, a whole, like, dispute that happens between them. But Kimberly came prepared, especially against Ed and Al, by kidnapping Winry. Yeah. And bringing her there. So we get a whole thing there of... uh, I'm, I'm glad she's not just, like, damsel in distress who has no idea what's happening. No, she's immediately told what's up. And, and is used to basically be like, hey, you guys are state alchemists. I'm working with the state. So listen to me trying to find these terrorists. <laughs> so we get a whole thing where basically they go off to continue their search for Scar. And that's about the point when they're like, okay, we can finally find Scar and hopefully avoid Kimberly. And so they make their way and they have this whole exchange where they encounter most of the group for Scar. Except for Scar himself, who was exploring other buildings. As Scar is exploring other buildings, he gets encountered by uh, uh, two of the guards who were with Kimberly. And it's revealed that those two were chimeras. And so that's awesome, first off. Yeah, they're chimeras, but they're a lot more... But they're actually, like, in control, basically. It's like I not... was just thinking this, by the way. Huh. I was just thinking about that. You're the thinking... whole thing of, uh, basically... We saw a Chimera beforehand, and it was, uh, uh, what was her name? Uh, Tucker? Uh, the, the daughter of, uh, uh, uh Tucker? Yeah. <laughs> Tucker? Tucker? <laughs> Tucker? Tucker, the daughter of, uh, 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 What was her name? Tucker. I forgot. I choose not to remember her name. <laughs> Uh, the good dog, yeah. So, anyway. <laughs> the dog's name was Zeus. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, that's right, Zeus. Okay, so Zeus Tucker... <laughs> Oh, I'm uh, dead. where basically there was that whole thing of like she didn't have the kind of control that these guys had yeah. and it, it, I was thinking about that for a while like man there's probably an alternate story where she could have lived but then I thought about it a little more I was like no no Shao Tucker would not have let her be conscious enough as like the Chimera soldiers were the, she, uh, he would not allow her to be like that he oh, would the... just flat out be like well dog loyal dog the the it's dog won't say the nothing first two, except for what I tell it to. <laughs> yeah. The first two chimeras so, that we that meet. That makes this even sadder. The first two chimeras we meet are named Gerso and Zampano. And I love these guys. And the the way that Kimberly like they ser- like they follow Kimberly, but the way that Kimberly throws them aside just allows this set of chimeras and another set to just be easily turned to yeah. def- uh, to be good guys and it's so funny to me. <laughs> And like, Ed I, and I Al... love the way that they join. I love the way they join the heroes because, like, the whole thing where it was, um, uh, like, like, hey, bring us along with you. Uh, like, uh, well, fuck that Kimley guy. It's like, uh, like, okay, you're gonna side with us. Well, no, it's still shit. It's like, why the hell would we want to be uh, on your team? It's like, don't you want your bodies back? Legitimately, we hadn't thought of that. <laughs> Didn't know that you could do that. Like. Well, there's no way for us to get our bodies back. I am trying to get my body back, says Al. <laughs> Fair enough. You know what? We're with you, man. And it's um revealed, and we find out that Scar is the one that killed Winry's parents. Yes. Yeah. That... Oh, we found that out a bit earlier. It uh, says it right here! No, that's... This is when Winry uh, really, like, after... Having first found out, gets to finally talk to Scar about it. It does, uh, yes. It's Every... not the reveal. It's not the reveal. We get the reveal like uh, way earlier when it was uh, Scar fighting. Uh, Winry and Miles yeah. arrive, and Winry confronts Scar face to face about the deaths of her parents. Yeah, this is not the reveal though. The, the reveal was a while back. Yeah, it's right here. 
This is literally where it showed up, right here. Dude, you can confirm this, right? What? Winry found out that her parents were killed by Scar, like, way earlier. It was back when, uh, like, when they first basically met May. Don't say it. It says... No, don't say it. Don't admit that I'm wrong. <laughs> no, it's... I'm reading the fucking thing. I'm reading the episodes. I'm going no, off of just, what I'm reading. I was just adding details. I was just adding details. It, but you're saying I'm wrong. You did yeah. this last time. Every time I'm reading the episodes and I'm saying... And I read exactly what's on there and you go, that didn't happen yet or it did already happened. Yeah. You fuck. <laughs> what does it say in here? Where are you? The one that you showed me. The fa face to face about the deaths of her parents, right there. Winry and Miles arrive, and Winry confronts Scar face to face about the death of her parents. Face to face. That sounds like it's the first time. No. Wait. It literally no. His like when you go Episode up. Episode twenty two. Uh, is what? No, no. She found out earlier, but then. But, but this is the actual converse. Like this is actually them talking about it. No, no. She and this, we see this, it. This is when she points a gun at him. And see, and we see Let's it for see. the first time. Yeah, episode 22, uh, to save him, his brother sacrificed himself and transferred his right arm onto Scar. Shocked upon waking up and seeing his brother's arm on his body, Scar went berserk and killed Winry's parents, whom he saw as the enemy. Back in the present, Edward intervenes between Winry and Scar, reminding Scar of when his brother protected him. That is when it was revealed. Back so in Winry 22. decides, uh, so Winry goes... This is more the confrontation. So Winry like, yeah. is going, like, pointing the gun at him and it just goes, hmm, you know what? I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna kill you because my parents tried to keep you alive. So I'm gonna follow that. I'm gonna keep trying to keep them alive, and so, oh, one of the it turns out one of the guys with um General Armstrong is actually is fallen. Yeah, we and found that out a bit earlier. I thought that was awesome. Shut up. <laughs> He's voiced by Zoro in the in the Japanese dub, and him and Scar finally meet together. And they kind of go back and forth about because because their whole thing is like with as is fallen like they are the most conflicted to actually help this country the Amestrians because they are responsible for a lot of death. That's right. Okay, it was Beerus. Yeah, in English, it's Beerus. <laughs> yes, and so like it, so they decide to so they they're able to turn the chimeras on them like to on Kimberly and have them be on their side. And Kimberly had the great idea of keeping Owl and Ed separate from each other, so this is kind of where they kind of get separated for a while. <laughs> yeah. And Owl trying to like he's tr like they learn that um that Br that the entire fortress has just been taken over by Kimberly and his forces, and Armstrong has kind of been recalled back to Central because of her killing an officer. And so Al's trying to go and find everybody to tell them, hey, don't go back there because it's bad. I, I like this moment of the party splitting. They like, split up. It, it's very interesting, like, the relationship. It's, also, it's also because of um the way that Ed and Kimberly, their fight, and Kimberly brings in another two chimeras. Because this is the episode, because the next one is where we get the backstory of Hohenheim. Right. Yeah. So so we get all that. Oh oh and Hohenheim goes to the um he like in the present he finds the um the place where Ed and Al back in the first couple episodes that they fought the uh, the priest guy. Yeah. Right. And so like they're starting to rebuild and all that kind of stuff and he's a really strong alchemist so he's willing to help and all that kind of stuff. So that's where that's where Hohenheim is right now. <laughs> He has one of my favorite scenes as well, that, like around episode 40, uh, where we got the whole backstory thing. It's actually number 40. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Uh, it's the uh, scene where uh, he gets to meet the teacher of um, uh, Ed and Al, uh, being, uh, uh, what was it, Sig, and what was her name? Uh, Izumi. Izumi. And uh, upon meeting her... Uh, notices the whole thing of, like, her guts are messed up because of the... Uh, a human transmutation that she did and so he fixes her a little bit yeah he fixes up her guts to make it so she's not continually sick <laughs> continuously coughing up blood, <laughs> yeah, continually coughing coughing blood. Up blood. and uh, when asked by Izumi and Sig of just like okay what the hell are you that you're able to do this uh, 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 I'm a philosopher's stone re uh, that was the reveal that he was a philosopher's stone himself yeah and so we go back and so Ed's fully defies Kimberly and so Kimberly set sets the other the next two chimeras on him. Darius and Heinkold. 
<laughs> and there is in... context, Heinkel. I love Darius and Heinkel, the gorilla and the lion. Yeah, it, he doesn't look like a gorilla at all. He does. I think he looks like a gorilla. He's, he's, he's like ca- he's caveman. He looks more like a caveman. He looks more like a exactly Neanderthal. Exactly. Like, instead of a cave, <laughs> instead of a gorilla. But he has like hair on his hands. And he got the sideburns that kind of like stick out, and he's all gruff looking. Gorillas have much more hair than that. <laughs> well, it's almost like he's fucking transforming back and forth between a human and a girl. You fucking monkey! <laughs> <laughs> I love his design. Yeah. No, I have no complaints about his design. It's it's great. You were the one that it's, the entire time we were watching, he was going, "That's not a gorilla." <laughs> oh yeah, no. In my opinion, I don't think it looks very gorilla, but it's still a good design. Of he looks like. Just animalistic enough. Ed makes ammonia. Yeah. Ed makes ammonia and fucks him up. <laughs> and then he gets. And then there's a giant explosion, and he get and Ed gets full and stabbed by a steel bar, and he's dying. But as he's like dying, he goes over to Darius and Heigl and saves their lives because they were gonna be crushed, and they're just like, God damn it, he saved our life. Now we got our lives. Now we gotta save his. <laughs> All right, kid. What the fuck are we supposed to do to help you? Well. I could use my soul to repair my body, but it's going to shave a few years of my life. God! <laughs> Man, alchemy. What a fun, fun concept. <laughs> so, so Ed is completely like, if, like they fall into like a mine shaft and all that kind of stuff. They're completely separated. And Al, <laughs> Al got, got completely trapped in the snowstorm. And no one was able to lift up his very heavy armor. So what did they have to do? Dismantle him. <laughs> yeah. So it's just when he come when he come when he wakes back up from being too tired to from walking in the blizzard, he's just like, ah, where's my everything? <laughs> Not just that. This is the point when it becomes the most dark part of his story. His body is uh, rejecting his soul. Oh yeah, he goes back, and he just kind of and he gets rejected. Oh. Like, it's starting to reject it in a way that, like, uh, he can't ignore. Like, uh, he'll have moments where he's suddenly just out of it for extended periods of time. That's it's terrifying. horrifying. Yeah. So so we go back to Hohenheim, and he finds the tunnel of the uh, the transmutation circle. And he's just like, God damn it. And then he, count, and then he is able to... But Pride's there, because Pride is literally in the entire circle. And... And so the Hohenheim's able to get away and under and basically know that oh god he's doing the transmutation circle again and all that kind of stuff and and since since Kimberly literally lost everything but Kimberly's still alive what does Kimberly do he goes and gets the Russians and tells them hey we're gonna be we're gonna betray basically Russians yeah <laughs> they're the Russians yeah they're basically the Russians they're the Ruskies and Ruskies. uses them to to attack the fortress but the thing is is that (laughs) they don't have any anybody with alchemy so kimberly just easily sabotages them and then just sets all of the fortresses um cannons to just destroy them all and it's (laughs) and basically he just uses this as like a aha i did something don't put me back in jail guys (laughs) please and so um is when we get a great scene as well of like like we did it we beat these fuckers and then cut to envy yes they're yeah they they trying to pull uh, their usual shit trying to such a hide with fucker hide someone and they so they're able to capture and like completely stop envy from everything and what does marco do destroys the philosopher's stone inside envy so envy's true form is a little leech thing marco i forgot well, it, yeah actually marco destroys the philosopher's stone inside envy it's a really cool scene what happens of like a, it's one of my favorite scenes where it was envy's first defeat i'll say that basically of while uh, while trying to go in and uh, uh take marco uh, uh, retrieve marco has this moment where everybody had planned for uh uh, like taken down envy so envy's getting messed up transforms into a monster gets ready to go and kill a bunch of people and marco's just like okay time for me to deal with this shit runs in gets captured and it's like yeah i was kind of ready for this and uh, bursts his arm in and destroys the philosopher's stone 
in the most brutal fashion. It's my one of my favorite scenes uh, that made Marco a better character it for me. It definitely improves him, yes. By by sh- shoving it to Envy. That's all you have to do to be a good character. Just shove it to Envy. And so it reduced Envy to its uh, base, uh, like what it is. Just this disgusting little bug. So this entire time, with the fort being completely taken over by Kimberly and all that kind of stuff, General Armstrong has been sent back to Central and is basically playing the game that everybody thinks that she's part of the like that she switched sides and all that kind of stuff and is going for immortality so she's learning everything that they're just all showing her and one thing that they definitely shouldn't have shown her is (laughs) a immortal army army like an immortal army factory where it's these dead bodies that were that are going to have souls put into them and used as soldiers and she's just like oh okay man this sounds like a great plan oh man i'm so excited oh world domination here we go except she keeps her cool a little better (laughs) and while the the entire group except for like with al and everybody they ended up going and finding they they the, all split up. They had this whole moment where they all split up. Of like, May was told to head back to her home with uh, with, with envy, envy yeah. of like, there you got your immortality. Uh, have fun with that. There's your proof. As uh, Marco and uh, Scar are making their way to uh, interact with the other Ishvalans, and Al and Winry go off to uh, uh, basically meet back with some allies. And who do they end up meeting instead? <clears throat> Hohenheim, alongside Rose, and no, and, and Rose, yeah. yeah. She's she's that one girl. You remember? Yeah, she's the one. You remember? Priest, yeah. I remember. I the, remember Rose. The the blind follower of religion. Yes. Yes. I remember. She's apparently important <laughs> in the in the movie of um the Full Metal Alchemist. She she gets more screen time. Yeah, it's a bit bizarre. No, especially uh she uh uh. Just everything to do with that movie is weird. So, I'm not going to talk about it. Ed <laughs> is on the run. He is Hitler's tr- in that movie. <laughs> Ed is uh. Uh, Ed is on the run because Kimberly wanted because because he defied orders and all that kind of shit. But he's also dying, so the chimeras kind of like take him to a doctor, and then they withdraw money using his IP address, so they know exactly where he is, and they kind of have to like escape and all that kind of stuff, trying to get away from. From Wrath's soldiers, King Bradley's soldiers, and all that kind of stuff, and Ho- this is where Hohenheim tells Al everything about the um about how he's a philo- living philosopher's stone and the circle and all that kind of the transmutation circle, and they um <laughs> you know what Al <laughs> my favorite thing is just Al just being like okay you're gonna help us. <laughs> yeah i don't really care that like you did like technically a terrible thing or whatever or is like helped or that's in the past help us <clears throat> so i don't give a shit so if you help us it's cool there's this one random chimera that shows up his name is Beto, and he's like a fr- apparently a friend of greed and greed it, like that's this new version of Greed. About. That, this scene. It's oh, like a chameleon that dude. scene made me sad where it's just like this he's like my friend greed up. Who the fuck are you? <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Just... Wait, that was my friend. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll use the bathroom. I'll be back. Awakens memories. So now we get to the fabled promised day. The day that lives in infamy. You know what kind of day that is, Jinsu? In the beginning, there was the cube. <laughs> That's what you fucking sound like right now. Good. There was the promised day. The day that was promised. Hey, Jinsu. What did you promise? There me? was the daughter of Show Tucker. The uh, the, the the daughter of Show Tucker. <laughs> Named Tucker. I was trying to ask what the name was earlier, but no, this one is literally the day that was promised of promising <laughs> days. So 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 for my alchemist, we get a little rematch between Greed and Bradley. And but this time he's Greed survives and he escapes. And <laughs> all because of that uh, that moment of like I've killed my friend. Fuck goes off and beats the tries to beat the shit out of Bradley gets beat the shit out of yeah. So <laughs> there's a part where where um, General Armstrong goes back to her estate that's near Central, like her family estate, and uh, the other Armstrong, the her brother, goes Out. back as well, and they kind of go back and forth about 
who is going to be the who will take success, like become the new head of household and <laughs> I think it should be me and then General Armstrong you said what now come here <laughs> let's go and they just and she just starts throwing them all over the house and it just no please stop him. please stop no uncle you, uncle do you yield father help uh, there's no way of helping you my son <laughs> well i'm going on vacation i'm retiring and she so she so she wins and like obviously wins and sends everybody else away and basically just like this is my house everybody go Long story short about that, she literally just turns it into a secret base now. Se- secret base for all of her soldiers from Briggs Fortress and is used as like a he- hidden army fortress base that they're able to take back. Yeah. <laughs> That's all that it was! Yeah. <laughs> I'm waiting. Oh, You were saying mayhem. So May... <laughs> so May's trying to head back to Jing to bring back Envy as like a proof of immortality and what does envy do but convince her to bring him back to central hear me out bring me back you can become immortal you can do immortality things immortal oh yeah yeah he's thinking that day immortal oh i did see my immortal so <laughs> hey immortal oh back. so so they go back so ed and the two chimeras with him they go and they find the place that they uh that gluttony attacked and they got swallowed by gluttony at and they find Ling there not greed Ling because apparently in that moment of weakness after getting his ass kicked Ling was able to retake his body from greed and so I've got control for long this is some bullshit yeah and so they kind of work so since greed defied the will of father and all that kind of stuff him and Ling come to an understanding and kind of have a Moon Knight split personality sort of situation that go on. And it, it is one of my favorite two character dynamic that happens later on that I do really like. Like these two, like Ling and Greed, very much like they they bounce off each other well. They have they start aligning their goals a bit more and more over time, even though they're very different goals. <laughs> this is another one of my favorite scenes, honestly, of just, like, when it comes to greed, uh, as as uh, Ed calls him, Greeling, uh, when it comes to this scene, honestly, it's one of my favorites because the whole thing of, like, eh, I'm just going to head off and do my own thing. Eh, screw you guys. I don't really care. And it's like, oh, wait, what if we team up? What? I work under you guys? <laughs> nah. <laughs> you guys may as well work under me. Okay. What? Okay. Okay. Let's go. And that's the negotiation. Yeah, done. And so, like, when they're... So, some soldiers are escorting Winry back because she's a civilian, doesn't need to be in the fight and all that kind of stuff, and literally just comes across Ed. (laughs) Yeah, because he was hanging at her house. And just goes, oh, hey. (laughs) That scene did make me laugh, like, really hard. Of, like, it... It was a, a basic enough scene that anime always does of just like, okay, I'm I'm in my private room. Let me get ready to start changing. Looks over, sees Ed eating a sandwich. Okay. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> so, like, at the estate, so Mustang visits uh, General Armstrong at the uh, the estate. And... I'm brought flowers. Flowers suck ass. <laughs> 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 and like they they basically work they put their minds together and create a an amazing plan that on the day before the promised day they um they are able to trick king bradley that there's a whole there's a coup happening in central you're not there what are you supposed to do oh i'm gonna get on a train go back there and take everything back they bomb the train <laughs> they completely blow it up and Bradley is just gone. And so, so literally, so General Armstrong, she's just like, you know what? Maybe I should be taking control. And Father and Sloth show up right behind her and just go, no, nah, we'll take in charge. And she goes, shit. <laughs> that was a terrifying scene. Just seeing Sloth show up so fast. By the way, Jinzu. Yeah. Congratulations on heading the Armstrong family. Flowers suck ass. 
Just <laughs> hearing Robin say that. Flowers suck ass. <laughs> and then so, so if Hohenheim finally like it was like in the entire group. Ed finally rejoins everybody, and Hohenheim's there, and there's a whole interaction between Ed and Hohenheim. But then, just like with Al, it's just like I don't care. Which I find it so funny that it's like there are characters that when they interact with their fa- their absent father, I have two sides. Buggy the clown. Do 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 do. Wait, play, yeah, play, play, play it louder, play it louder. <laughs> it's when the second one plays. It's overlapping the other. I love the echo. <laughs> I, love I have two sides when meeting my father. <laughs> Ballad of the Gladiators, or whatever it's called. But yeah, so, in this show, just the fact that two of the kid main characters meeting their absent father and just being like, yeah, whatever, <laughs> is so funny to me. Al is at least a little nice to him, of just like, oh, it's okay. I know that you have your whole thing. But let's work together and uh, do this thing. Ed, fuck you. Shut up, old man! Fucking piece of shit. And then, what is... What happens? But Al gets captured. And it gets puppeteered by Pride to lure everybody into the forest so that Pride can ambush them. So there's, like, this whole back and forth between literally the entire group fighting Pride. And, man, is it over... Like, it is not at all just... it, it is very one-sided at first. Mayhem, I just looked behind you and realized, oh, that's where I recognize Pride from. Huh? Oh, yeah. 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 Guys, Alucard. Alucard from uh, 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 Helsing. Yeah, no, that's that's kind of what Pride is like in this, of just like this collection of souls that's not as attached as uh, all the other homunculus. This is just a mass of shadows. Yeah. And so what does Head do in order to get the one up on Pride after everybody's getting sh- beat the shit out of by Pride? He um causes a blackout. <laughs> yeah. Cuz apparently Pride uh, as shadows can't do anything without light, which is yep. very funny. So they <laughs> so then it just turns into trying to find the kid in the forest to beat up. <laughs> so I, I think that was Heinkel who ended up fighting him. Yep, uh, so it's the it's the lion uh, chimera that goes in and just starts beating the shit out of them. And then the people who are living in the slums area are just like, man, I heard some commotion over here. We gotta go find. Let me take our lanterns out and so we can see. And then they find a lion man beating up a child. Monster! Beating up a child! Sees the, uh, the child, starts shooting out a, a tendril. Other monster! Yeah. And Gluttony shows up, and Gluttony's just like, I'm gonna help Pride, and we're gonna be working together. Starts getting beat the shit out of by the, uh, uh, some uh, Jing folk. <laughs> by Ling. By Ling, and uh, what was her name? Lan Fan. Lan Fan. <laughs> just starts getting beat the shit out of by them. I've died so many times to them! Oh, is that so? Yeah, so yeah, so Pride just literally just eats. Waka waka Glenn. waka 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 waka. Shut up. <laughs> just completely eats. Oh man, that just ugh, the transmutation circle of the city. <laughs> God damn it! The true transmutation circle all along was Batman. Batman. Can you imagine? Just like man, I wonder if we'll be able to find Sloth underground. Waka 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 waka. <laughs> so funny and we, so we get a, like a little thing about what mustang's doing because like they he's going for the espionage angle and just, they're trying to find him and turns out that this one lady madam christmas is like giving him information and all that kind of stuff turns out to actually be his foster mother and they have to fake a bombing of the bar that she owns in order to properly hide the information that they found about how um like proving that pride is a um is a homunculus and all that kind of stuff so there there is a cool thing that they do after um pride is able to like consumes gluttony and gets like power up so they all have to kind of work together and so Fu and alphonse they get a plan and they use flash bombs and the the effects that are used with a flash bomb is one of my favorite in the entire show. Just like the the intense, 
that, that gets flashed because extreme light, no shadows, nowhere. Pride get hurt. Ooh. <laughs> yep. Uh, we get this whole uh, massive fight with Pride after after having consumed uh, gluttony uh, of just like, well, I'm getting damaged. And I need this. <laughs> just pulls out a straw. <laughs> How hungry. <laughs> Pride, stop it! Please stop! No. Yum. Yummers. So, another... So, <laughs> when, um... After Mustang get, like, completely bombs the, uh... Like, his his foster mother's home. So, after completely bombing his foster mother's work, goes and makes his first move to kidnap Bradley's wife and use her as a hostage. And so... Kinda, sorta. Especially with the way that they do it. So... Ed is, and like, what, back with the fight with Pride, Ed and Hohenheim come up with a plan, and they're just like, all right, you are an idiot, we need to work together, and then Al's just like, I got an idea, let's, um, let's trap Pride. How are we gonna do that? Well, if he can't see with light, he kind of gets stuck as, as the kid, and the kid is very weak. <laughs> yep. So Al grabs Pride and is encased in this giant bubble that Hohenheim makes. And it's a really good plan. The only problem I have with the plan is that Al leaves his helmet off and just allows Pride to just do whatever. He's 14. He's... he's like, that's the thing, though, is that I've had... I've seen kids that, like, they're given a task and they're dictators about it. <laughs> like, they are full-on, like, they it's don't let Al. you to he's breathe. Like it's Al of he's young, but he's also very, very innocent with the way he acts. Yeah. So it, it basically, Pride has Al's helmet and a stick, and just basically uses um on the what, promised day, like uses um Morse code to to like contact. Well, who was it that he was contacting? Kimberly. Kimberly. He was contacting Kimberly, and so <laughs> so Al is just like shit, fuck. <laughs> We get a fight between, uh, basically it was Kimberly knocking out Heinkel, and then uh, Alphonse uh, fighting off uh, Kimberly and Pride. And learning and being able to use alchemy, because I don't think he's actually used he's alchemy. He's used alchemy. He has used Quite it? Quite okay. a few times. But this was He's like just huge... less proficient than, uh, no, the huge thing about it was he was given a stone by uh, a Heinkel. Yeah, he had... He was given a stone, and so he finally got to understand. Uh, the thing about the stones is each one of those souls is yearning for something. And in this case, they're yearning to fight. They're yearning to take down the sons of bitches that ruin their lives. Yeah, so... Back so with, it's like, um, let them fight. So back with Mustang uh, kidnapping Bradley's wife, turns out the... <laughs> The other people in charge were trying to kill his wife. Like, well, let's kill her. Because she could have been, because she would obviously, just as a normal person, didn't know about Bradley's secret identity and the secret plan and all that kind of stuff. Did you mention what happened to Bradley? He got bombed, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Did you mention the old man? And how, how genius he is? I love that guy. He's so you good. mean Pixis, yeah. Pixis, yeah. <laughs> He's literally Pixis from Attack on Titan. Yeah. And so, so it's literally just like, take Mustang hostage, kill everybody, including the wife. Huh? <laughs> so basically the entire time in Central, they um, are trying to keep her alive, survive. Oh, God, this is terrible. And, <laughs> and um, Briggs, and now the trap gets sprung and the this soldiers... This is basically all out war at this yeah, point. Yeah, it's like an entire fight in Central. And then it's back and forth, it's fighting, it's good fights. Ed, Ed and everybody gets back to Central to go kick Father's ass to stop him from activating the Promised Day and all that kind of stuff. And... Reading... I, I could try to summarize this of basically when it comes to oh, the massive the, um, fight. The, so, like, it's starting to go in favor of of Mustang and General Armstrong and everything like that. So what does someone on the Council of Evil do? But turn on the the Immortal Army. Yep. And they are some of the most terrifying things I've ever seen. There's a shot that happens where, like, 
one of another person of the council goes to like the main chair that Bradley has and is just like to be the one to sit in this chair. This was my few... favorite horrifying scene. Yes, is exactly where it, where it was where I was going with it. Where it's just the Jinsu. Mm. Do you remember this? Where there's a shot where he's like where one of the main council general dudes officers. He goes up to the to the fewer's chair and just goes, "Whoever sits in this chair rules all mysteries." And he's like going to start sitting down, but in the background, pause, you see there. the door slowly open and a bunch of the immortal soldiers just yes. pour into the room, just yes. unsilently. It's so that was actually terrifying. like when it comes to how scary these uh, creatures are. That was one of the scenes where it actually was freaking me out the most of just like. The silence of just them uh, just bursting in and uh, killing. And then we get a really good fight between uh, between Sloth and the Armstrong siblings. Yeah. <laughs> and turns out Sloth isn't, like, uh, he isn't slow. He's lazy. So he's actually really fast. Yeah. <laughs> and What a bother. And is actually very terrifying that I, I really like his... He's got like a supersonic speed dash attack and someone that big being that fast in the amount of times that they stab him through the head and he just gets back up. Yeah, no, it's it's one of my favorite fights of like towards the end of the Armstrongs versus Sloth, which then evolves into like during this massive fight, a bunch of those uh, zombie soldiers coming in trying to mess shit up. And uh, how do they manage to handle Sloth? In the best way possible of Izumi and Sig coming in to help out. Yep. The parents are here. Which, yeah, no, we finally get this uh, scene of um, uh, Sig meeting Armstrong. Just, <laughs> work together, brother. <laughs> brother in arms. It turns out the one person that could just that can kill the uh, the manic uh, the immortal army the best is uh Mustang. <laughs> yeah. Just, huh, so I just have to kill him? Gone. <laughs> and the only thing that kind of happens... So May shows up with Envy. And what does Envy do? Break out. Break out and... Absorb a bunch of immortals. And reveals to Mustang that, that Envy was the one that killed Hughes. Yep. And Mustang kind of flies off the handle. He just, well, I'm sick of this guy's shit. And, like, is going to kill Envy. And everybody tries to stop him. And that, that that's kind of where it was like a in-between where it was just like, I, do, like I was on the fence about supporting Mustang and not. Because it's like, yeah, he killed your best friend, but you're not leading by example. That's the only issue. Yeah. We can kill him, just not right now. <laughs> doomed if you do, doomed if you don't. Exactly. The, there was also a good moment where Thumb... <laughs> With um, with Envy trying to escape, like trying to flee from Mustang, and ended up turning into Mustang, and with Hawkeye, like they were trying to like. Oh, you mean see, one of the best jokes? Yeah, yeah one of the best jokes of the entire show. Just like, man, like trying to like Mustang, like Envy as Mustang trying to play it off as easily as possible, and they just don't you know, Mustang calls me this name. Well, Mustang we calls me by my first name whenever we're uh, we're around each other. <laughs> oh, so you're that close. I, I lied. lied. <laughs> <laughs> I lied. I lied. It's so good. I lied. You said you'd stay away. I lied. <laughs> <laughs> that scene was banger. And we fucking falls for it. Yeah. It starts trying to kill Hawkeye and as she's uh, as envy's fighting H hawkeye if, if that was actually mustang how do you think he would react if he would have been just... like i don't do that <laughs> and then hawkeye would have been like oh, okay <laughs> basically if if he didn't fly off and turn into envy then yeah he'd be fine <laughs> yeah. remember that was the point when reese is shot yeah dude, dude. Okay, okay, but but he believed her is the point but like what if what if like mustang was there and she was like she like points a gun at him and he's like uh, this is hot, but I don't know. <laughs> Babe? <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> Mustang calls me by my first name. No, I don't. Okay, let's go. What so you should. <laughs> you really should. So, <laughs> so we get Envy just going like, no, he's supposed to kill me. God damn it. And what does Envy do? Kill himself. 
uh, you all, uh, I gotta mention just the detail of just uh, Mustang trying to kill Envy. Just the snaps. It's just as brutal as when Mustang killed en uh, Lust. It's just as brutal. Yeah, here, one sec, one sec. I will say that there's a weird back and forth of, we're taking over, we're not taking over, we're taking over, we're talking to, we're it's like, every. Oh. I hate ads. Why are you playing the ad? What the hell are you doing to my lieutenant? <laughs> what are you saying? Are you accusing me of something? How long are you prepared to keep... <laughs> <laughs> Best scene. But God, I fucking love that scene. So and funny. Well, once again, my favorite thing about Envy offing himself, basically, was the way that it happened of basically, uh, it's just like, why aren't you killing each other? This is supposed to be the moment when you all kill each other. And just add, oh, you're envious of us for having the ability to forgive. I don't look up to you. <laughs> 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 you have to fucking say that. Oh, kill him. Dead. He kills himself. <laughs> Just so mad at the idea that he f is envious of humans. She's like, I don't fucking care. <laughs> as soon as he gets deconstructed and understood about who he is, just gets kills himself. Jinsu, I'm going to deconstruct your character. That's it! Hangs himself! <laughs> <laughs> That's it, killing myself! That's it, killing me both! <laughs> you ever been deconstructed so hard you just kill yourself? Yep. Oh, you have? <laughs> Eleven times, as a matter of fact. I do it to you guys all the time. Don't you know? So, Duke, you like burgers! <gasps> <laughs> so after Dude, your love of burgers comes from a deep trauma of uh, cows. <laughs> no, it's not the same. <laughs> so yay, we. Yeah, there's a lot of battling going on everywhere. But they, like, but they yeah. win, and hell yeah, we got we're in control of the main castle. Hell yeah! Oh God, Bradley's back. <laughs> I love the way this scene is done. Of just like we finally did it. We took over the entire castle. Bradley slowly walking up. Okay, you guys have taken good care of my castle. Now get the hell out of my house. Now get out of my and house. And he just runs. The scene of a tank trying to stop Bradley as Bradley is just running straight at the tank of, I'm going to kill whoever's in there. <laughs> and the tank going up the uh, uh, basically tunnel to the uh, main gate. Yeah. And just him chasing after the tank, getting ready to kill that whoever's the tank in is it. not on. That the tank does not have the advantage. <laughs> the tank is so severely disadvantaged in this moment, and that's so fucking cool. And gets to the top and fights Buccaneer, fights Greed, fights just everybody. Just kills Buccaneer. <laughs> kills Buccaneer. Okay, the death of Buccaneer is one of my favorite moments because. The way that it's handled of, oh shit, I'm about to die. Well, on the bright side, I took his goddamn sword. And as he's uh, about to die, Buccaneer, he's like, I think I got a way to handle this. As, uh, uh what was his name? Uh, of, what was the name of the, uh, grandpa of, uh, uh Lon Fon? Fu. Fu. Fu is protecting Greed and, uh, uh Gree Ling, basically. Uh, he's protecting him. And he goes like, well, I'm about to die because of how disadvantaged I am. Let me just blow this motherfucker up. Runs at him and uh, tries to uh, suicide bomb him. And he gets cut on the stomach and uh, is about to die. And it's like, to die by your head. And it's like, don't worry, I got this. And, uh, uh, I lost his name. Buccaneer. Buccaneer just runs in and... Uh, stabs him through the chest, uh, uh, Fu, uh, and, and manages to stab uh, Bradley. Bradley. 
And it's such a cool moment of, if I'm dying, don't worry, I'll take you with me. Uh, I'll bring you to hell with me. Yeah. And I'll go ahead and take out Bradley alongside me. And he's like, thank like, you. He's like, well, we're both dead. <laughs> so, in the meantime... He takes out his eye! In the meantime, Father and Hohenheim finally meet after a long time. And Hohenheim has some tricks up his sleeve to take take Father down. And in trying to... like, Because Hohenheim learned alchemy from Ishvalen. And in trying to take the Philosopher's Stone from Hohenheim, Father ended up using up his skin and all that kind of stuff, so he ended up showing his true form, which is I this black this mess moment. full of eyes. It definitely... I'm gonna say, the mm-hmm. best part about this is not even just that moment. It's the moment of Hohenheim going like, don't worry, I did the one thing that you refused to do. I remembered each and every person that is inside of uh, my Philosopher's Stone. Yeah, he sat down and spoke to all of them. I spoke to every last one of them. I remembered their name. I remembered what they uh, wanted to do in life. There was, there was also like so. What following going with Ed, he like his group underground. They find this very random setup that like I was very thrown off when it got revealed when like this part happened where they meet the gold tooth doctor literally his name is gold tooth doctor who yeah. created king bradley who uses like he has a bunch of soldiers that are rejected candidates and it's just it, it's very weird. weird i agree this was weird and the doctor like activates a thing that teleports ed al and izumi to um to father it was basically the equivalent of a uh, human transmutation uh, moment yeah. of like using like uh, the whole idea of the human transmutation to teleport uh, all the people who have already done it to father. Yeah. And yeah, th- uh, by the way, to mention what happened when it came to Hohenheim and father, it was specifically father was like, okay, fine. Then I'll just take your philosopher's stone. That's a lot of poison. Basically <laughs> destroys his body as those souls that were inside of Hohenheim begin to try to kill father. And that's when the skin suit falls off. Yeah. So, so, and so being, he just starts eating Hohenheim. So being after being teleported there. So he's consuming Hohenheim. Ed and Al get transported there, and Izumi's there, the uh, the teacher. And they're basically like, huh, four out of five. Man, they gotta really be step up their game. <sighs> Gold tooth and, doctor. That we cut back to the Gold tooth doctor. Step up my game! He it threatens to kill Hawkeye, and because he forces Mustang, that you have to bring her back. Like, you have to do human transmutation. And basically, he's trying everything he can to not let that happen and then bradley shows up and forces mustang to do transmutation just in general pride Pr- is pride, the one pride, who, and, like, pride and wrath uh apparently together. the way that they did it was uh like uh they can force somebody to uh do a human transmutation but it costs their life yeah and so pride was just like okay i got this wraps them up and just uh, does a whole thing where it's like here's human transmutation and uh, i forced you to do it mm. and uh we get now that uh he has gone through human transmutation uh mustang uh had to trade something away what did he trade away his eyesight he's blind man the man who tried to uh gaze into the future of the country uh, has lost his uh, vision. You. Yeah. So, it, Scar and Bradley now fight, and it's a good fight. I'm at my tail end. Who wants to fucking kill me? <laughs> I'll take that. I'll say that's my only problem. Of like, I love Bradley's voice. My only problem that I I quickly got used to was the fact that the voice actor he has uh like a bit of mush mouth whenever he talks. Wait, like, uh, uh, Scar or Bradley? Bradley. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not Scar. Scar is the be- is one of the best voice actors in the entire industry. Yeah, like that's J. Uh, uh, J. Michael Tatum. Uh, uh, right, that's his name. I don't know. <laughs> I gotta check it. But so, Pri- so Pride shows up with Father and Ed and Al. They go after and start fighting him, and 
May is actually the one to go yeah, after, Michael Tatum. after father. And since she has Alka history, she's able to use it. And apparently the, the entire time the Ishvalans have been laying anti-transmutation circles throughout the entire country to do like an anti-whatever the promised day thing is that they're trying to do. And um, so I, I checked it. I, I want to mention real quick of like, yeah, uh, when it comes to the voice actors of the show, holy shit. There's a lot like, of them. Uh, mentioning two of my favorite voice actors uh, where only one of them I have a slight problem with, it was Scar versus Bradley. Uh, Bradley has a great voice, but he's got a bit of mush mouth whenever he talks. Of like, uh, It's the same when he does uh, his voice in uh, One Piece, uh, Sengoku. Uh, he's got... Uh, he talks a bit like this, where he's... Uh, like, he does, like, a Sean Connery impression. He's, he's talking like Sean Connery, with a bit of, like, uh, he hasn't had water yet. <laughs> uh, meanwhile, J. Michael Tatum, the voice of Scar, in everything he's ever done, has been fantastic. Yes. He is Scar, literally one of the best characters of Full Metal Alchemist. He is Eneru from One Piece. He is, in One Piece, he is God. Awesome, and of course, He's rap god. Yes, and then in Attack you, you on know, Titan, li- I was gonna say literally one of my favorite lines in almost all of One Piece of uh, uh, just I am God. It's just full selling, and it's just like holy shit, what an intimidating character. And then he's and in of Attack course, on Titan. best character possible, Irvin Smith. Yes, he like he has one of the moments that has been argued to death. Whether or not it is better in English or Japanese, his final speech is a speech that has been argued to death. Which one it is better? <laughs> yeah. What, what do you think, uh, Jinsu? Hmm. Uh, Irvin Smith, English and Japanese. That final speech. You know, not. Uh, you've heard. Uh, you've heard both, just... right? <laughs> what? You know what? Uh, when it comes to uh, Irvin Smith in Attack on Titan. Uh, his final speech. Uh, have you heard it English and Japanese? Yeah. Yeah. What do you think of that? It worked on me. Yeah. I was gonna <laughs> yeah. I was gonna say I'd ride it to battle. <laughs> yeah. But uh, I'm just saying, like, Urban Smith, uh, the English voice of him is so good that he's one of those few actors that whenever you see him in something, it's one of the few times that you have a hard time, uh, like saying the dub is bad. In my opinion. That's at least my opinion. Good for you. Because <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's the voice of Scar is the reason I'm mentioning it. Yeah. 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 And so, Scar is great. So, Father is able... He has all of his sacrifices, and the, the promised day is actually the solar eclipse. And it's all finally coming together, and it finally happens. The transmutation begins. And it... We see it go all over the country, the, the entire circle be done, and everybody dies. Everybody dies. Absorbing all of the souls, Father has enough power to open a giant door, and he becomes this giant being, like this giant cyclops. This giant cyclops. And, like, confronts God himself, basically. It's called, like, the Eye of God. And it's like, it takes over, like, the place of the moon in the eclipse. And it's a very, very well done and intense scene. And I'm just like, okay! This was my Ooh. favorite, this was genuinely my favorite scene in the entire show. Because it gave me Gurn Lagon vibes. Like, the movie vibes. Yeah. Of just how... The, si- the scale. Intense. The scale and everything was. Just the moment of just the shadow rising above the country and then lifting up and taking form. And it's the uh, dwarf in the jar, uh, taking a giant form, screaming out to God to become one with him as the moon, it opens a door and you just see the eye of God before him as he reaches out and all the tendrils that have popped out for human transmutation all this time reach out and combine the two as the Eye of God and uh, the Dwarf in the Jar fuse together. And in this time, Hohenheim, Ed, Al, and Izumi, they're all in Mustang. They're all just like, they, for some reason, get a pass and aren't killed. 
and like their souls aren't absorbed and in this time hohenheim is just like all right activate the plan 1735 plan b where where he turns out he's been leaving little pieces of his philosopher's stone all over the entire country that's why he's he was an absent father is because he's le- been leaving little pieces of himself everywhere and mm. activates it and it basically <laughs> there's a there's a well you didn't actually make a circle Where, like how are we going to actually do anything there's the sh- shadow of the moon over the entire country from the eclipse that's your circle oh. and it, it completely reverses like it completely cuts off father uh, like the dwarf in the jar and all of his stuff that he was trying to do and he was able to get a taste of that power so he's very strong powered up right now he's younger than like he's he has the appearance of young hohenheim again uh, and... he's got the appearance of the perfect being essentially is what it's supposed to be of uh, a uh, neither male nor female body and in in the moment that the the eclipse ends scar and like everybody's revived and all that kind of stuff everybody gets their souls back everybody's back alive and while bradley and scar are fighting the sun the moon starts moving away and while bradley had the upper hand on scar is blinded by the sun and scar kills bradley that's a moment that i really like but also of course purposefully pissed me off of just the moment of bradley basically has the killing strike landed on him of kind of sort of but he lives and he takes this moment of he's beginning to die like his last life is at, at its end and as he's dying uh he looks to uh soyfon and is just like go ahead get your killing blow if you want your killing blow go ahead take it right now and she refuses to do it and it's like yeah you fucking cowards uh, you humans oh well i don't even care anymore i'm just happy to have died like a warrior and he dies peacefully and then it goes with a to... smile on his face. Yeah, and, and then his, it... his death was very poetic because uh, when when the Ishvalan leader is talking to him, talking about the hammer of God, and he totally shits on the Ishvalan leader, going like the hammer of God, blah blah blah, and I, they, it's not gonna kill me, it's not gonna fuck me up. Uh, no. The hammer of God strike me down for all the people I've killed. Why aren't I dead yet? And then, <laughs> and then, and then, and then he gets, not dead yet? And then he literally so gets flashed evil. by the sun. He literally gets flashed by the sun and dies to a religious man. <laughs> yeah. If I'm so evil, then may God himself strike me down. <laughs> ha! Give it your egg game. So we get like a... So Ed and Pride start fighting again. And Pride has like this whole like, I'm going to consume you, Ed. I'm going to eat you. And Ed is just like, how about you just don't? And I just... And Kimberly and I work together for some reason. Because Kimberly's just like, you know what? I hate this little guy. He's too prideful. <laughs> What I loved about it was especially because it wasn't like, oh, he's too prideful. It was literally, your entire thing is pride. You are a perfect being. And you're about to ruin that? No way in hell. As he forces pride to get killed. Yeah, he he forces his death, yeah. Yeah. So we get back to, um, so everybody's kind of, so everybody's kind of like recovering and all that kind of stuff. They... They like everybody's in like the main final battle, yeah. Yeah, the main garden of the uh, of the castle, and <laughs> they like, they go after each other. And so, what's his face? Uh... Basically, best way to describe it, we're having this final battle moment of father is going after everyone of just like, well, if I can't have power, God, I gotta get all the stones. Basically, of I'm going to kill oh, everybody. Yeah, and so he goes after Ed because obviously main character he has to kill him, and the um, so father pin it destroys Ed's auto mail, and pins his left arm. And what does Al do in order to fix it to make everything better? I trade my holographic Charizard, <laughs> as in my body, as in his body, and and Ed gets his body back. His um his arm back, and he's able to. Al returns to his soul, and Al returns his soul to his body. Yeah, and everything like that. And Ed basically just gets like second wind. I have both my arms now. I'm gonna mess you up. <laughs> and... Fuck him up. <laughs> and so it's just a it's a very one sided fight against Ed and Father. Like it just Ed is just going all out because everybody's there. Greed joins him. the fight, has a moment where uh, he's trying to kill father, and 
gets caught by father and it's like like oh, i can get this stone now and it's like okay fine i'll fuse with you but hey guess what i can change your body and turns him to coal yep and, and it is just kills breaking greed down break and greed is dead but but ling survives yeah, ling survives because he was split off from greed uh by greed yeah which was cool and we get father basically as this destro- almost destroyed body uh continues to fight ed and ed gets one final fucking uh, punch through its chest killing uh father as father consumes itself and uh, dies you yep. know and after and afterwards drops one final philosopher's stone and everybody's just like ed you can use it on uh, to bring back out and he's just like oh fuck that no <laughs> and he goes and has a bit of a chat with truth and sacrifices his entire ability to use alchemy to bring back Al. And Truth just applauds him and just goes, You, you did it! You win! You finally figured it out, you idiot! <laughs> so we so that's basically it. Like we get like a, a little Mustang story. Like of... Mustangs trying to do everything possible to to become the leader and try not to be insensitive to the Ishvalin and all that kind of stuff. And it's called dual cropping. <laughs> that that double entendre right there. <laughs> and Al gets his body back, and they go off on their separate ways. Al goes to Jing to go find Mei and learn Alk history. And Ed goes west after proposing to Winry in a very Ch- botched tiny, way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and and then we get a time skip, and Ed has kids. It's great. Winry. With Winry, it's With great. Winry. End so, of story. So and, yeah, I will and say he's taller than her. <laughs> but but Al is... he drank his milk. <laughs> no, he didn't. Well, actually, not his milk. Not his. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> he's married now. It's okay. So yeah, is that very much? It's a very wrapped up in a nice little bow ending for Full Metal Alchemist. That it's like they can't really make anything else about it. That like if you do make anything about it, it kind of destroys its original image i will say characters favorite character uh scar favorite character mustang and l favorite and character hohenheim hohenheim uh, I, I love hohenheim I, I like i like scar he's the most religious man in the entire show <laughs> heretics <laughs> exactly <laughs> your face explode <laughs> your face explode <laughs> I was going to say, I remember mentioning it early on with uh, when Scar was introduced. They're just like, hey, look, the guy that hates alchemy. And uh, you were just like, yes, that yes. Joke. You were upset a little when he started using alchemy, but then he basically explains it as, I'm using alchemy to destroy alchemy. Hell he, yeah. used, he used a mix of alchemy and alchemy. Yeah. Yes. So my final thought is, if you were given a philosopher's stone, how many sandwiches would you make? How many bodies are there? Yeah. <laughs> How many bodies do I have? <laughs> How quickly the Philosopher's Stone would get smashed in our presence, Jinsu. Yeah. Mm, I could turn it to ketchup and then put it on my sandwich. Ketchup? On, what? No. Kill Remember because it's partially liquid. Kill yourself! <laughs> but, uh, no, it, I'd make three sandwiches. You'd make a salt block. They'd all be made of you salt. Ma- <laughs> Wait, isn't Hohenheim technically killing some of the souls when he's using alchemy? Yes. Or when he's using alchemy to heal people? Yes. yes. But he has so many. Uh, he's basically made deals with them to work with him. So, yeah. It's like, I only use me to heal people who are almost dying. Gotcha. It's literally he's spoken to them. So, in his case, he's doing it in a righteous way. Yeah. All right. What's next, Duke? What's next? It's over. The, this part. So uh, let me see if there's a, a thing that we can talk about next. Shit. Where's a hint? About, Why'd you have to scare me? About the next series. What's the next hint? What's a hint? Give a hint. Look at the map. Uh, technically, the next thing is the end of uh, Hunter Hunter. Hey. <laughs> oh, sweet. Yeah. Right, we're back to Hunter Hunter. All right. If you like this episode, make sure you subscribe for more. And we'll catch you all next time. Bye bye. Goodbye. Alchemy is a sin. You're all sinners. Heresy. Heresy! Heresy! Even God, it's not that hard. It's not that hard, (laughs) just do it. Don't be a bitch. If you want to see more of our content, you can find our YouTube, Instagram, and Twitter on our Linktree at Linktree slash Green Villains. That's L-I-N-K-T-R dot E-E slash Green Villains.